What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Exoria. Oh, yeah, guys. So what I wanted to look at today, uh, we have one more quest remaining on our first page here on the survival tab. Uh, we have the metal growth. This wants us to get these ore berries. Now, I was going to go plant the trees that we need in order to um, trade for those. If we look at the recipes, for instance, like the iron ore berry bush here requires us to have a coconut and two iron ingots. Yeah, uh, we need something to plant... I guess our coconut trees on we have all these different saplings but we don't really have any extra dirt and i still needed more dirt for finishing up our farm that we have outside over here uh we were making like these four nine by nine farm areas up here and we had enough for most of them but like our last one here still needs a bit more right uh so i could scavenge some of this dirt grow the trees and then you know uh still need more for up here but i figure that since last episode, we made those better efficiency strainers. We should try and take advantage of those. Uh, so, yeah, we made the the iron strainers, both the survival one and the dense one or whatever. Uh, what are these called? The solid survivalist strainer and the solid survivalist strainer dense. Uh, these have a 10% efficiency bonus, and they have quite a few uses on them. So, yeah, I definitely want to take a look at these guys today. We'll try and set up some kind of an automation with them using the build craft pipes that we got last episode as well. Uh, one thing I wanted to do, though, we've been using these strainers outside uh, in the natural water. That's like the, the lakes and stuff that have been occurring. It's kind of annoying having to run all the way over to wherever that is, check them, and hang out there for a while, and then come all the way back and bring materials. Yeah, I want to try and set one of these up here in the base. I think that's probably going to make more sense. Uh, so first things before we do anything like that, though, I do want to do a quick test to make sure that we can, in fact, do this and how much water we're going to need. I don't know if this requires just one source of flowing water over it or like a three by three thing of water around it or how this all works. We did see, though, if it had... Uh, in a lake, if we remove the source block on top of this and there was flowing water, it gave it a 10% bonus increase. But yeah, let's do like a quick test here. Just kind of see what we got going on. Uh, so yeah, we'll do, I guess, this and that. We'll remove these two blocks here. So we should have one spot on top of this block for a source block to live. And then it will flow over on top of the strainer. So what we want to do here is, I want to try and collect this extra block. I think I got it. What we want to do is just kind of use that tool that we have to see the efficiency, this thing, and see if this is going to work. So if I place water here, yeah, uh, let's place a block here so we can see what's going on. Yeah, so the water source is here and it just flows over on top of this thing. Um, if we grab our efficiency meter and click this, yeah, it just says bonus efficiency 10%. That's the same efficiency we were seeing when we put these out into the lakes around. So yeah, I guess that's all we need to do. Unless there is some other special way to get even more efficiency out of this. I think that's how we're going to set these things up. So, uh, probably what we're going to do, at least for right now. Uh, let's see, let's pick this up. I think we're going to set that up over in here. Now, this room requires all of this concrete being exposed. So I think what we'll end up doing is kind of stick this in the wall a little bit. Let's do that. Let's move this all back. So we'll end up having the strainer. Oh, I don't know. Um, how are we going to do this? I guess we'd need some kind of glass in order to see what's going on. Uh, let's see. We can put the strainer down here, I suppose. Like so. We could have the water source flowing from right here onto it. And then we could just put like some kind of a slab, I guess, or glass. Maybe a slab will work for now. This is not supposed to be like a permanent setup. So something like that, right? I think that would work. I mean, it doesn't look super pretty, but I, I don't know how pretty this thing is ever going to look, <laughs> to be completely honest. Um, so now that we got that kind of figured out, let's put our efficiency meter up for now. Uh, what I want to do is look at getting an automation going. So I'm going to use one of these wooden engines that we made last episode, a wooden transport pipe, This, which is what you use to extract items out. And then we need cobblestone transport pipe. This is just for normal transport transporting of items. Um, so we have an insert pipe, which I don't think we need specifically. I forget what these are for. 
I think we can just extract out and just have this pipe connected to a chest and call it good. I think that's all we need to do. Uh, I did make a couple other chests. So we have large, well, we will have a large chest storage for this. Um, I guess we will need a redstone signal. So let's make ourselves a lever. Hopefully the lever recipe is the same. It is anything else we need. I think that's pretty much it. Okay. So let's come over here. The chest for this. Oh, I don't know. Um, I suppose we could just stick it right here next to it. Let's just dig out some of this real quick. Okay, so the engine will be down there, I expect, is what we're going to do. So let's place the engine first. I can't place it. Okay, I was kind of in the block a little bit, I guess. Uh, so then we need the wooden extraction pipe. Okay, so you can see it connects directly to the block. Uh, that down there does need the redstone signal. I suppose we could break that out. Let me break this too. We'll put the lever down here. And turn that on. So that should start pumping. I made the advancement free power. All right. I think this. Oh. Oh, that's right. The uh, strainers. I've seen that before. Work similar to a hopper. When you drop items on top of them, it kind of picks them up and puts into their inventory. I don't know if that'll be useful for anything in the future, other than. Well, I don't know if that's useful for anything, to be honest. Okay, so we got that going. Um, this stopped pumping because it has nothing left to extract. I think if we put some more items in here... Okay, yeah, so you can see I dropped them on there. So I'll start pumping again. Uh, but anyway, so this just needs to attach to a chest. Well, it needs to attach to some kind of a pipe that will attach to a chest. Uh, let's see, I think... I'm not sure if we could put a chest directly on this wooden pipe. Should we test that first? Maybe we should test that. It's been a while since I've done build craft. Uh, let's see if I drop an item on there. It does end up in this chest. Half a stack. Yeah, it looks like it is pumping items. Okay. Well, I thought we had to use these cobblestone transport pipes. Turns out we don't. Just the one wooden pipe will just extract directly into the chest. So that works well for me. Very good. Okay. Let's make a few blocks here so we can fill in this mess. Uh, we'll fill in that, that, this. We'll place our water source uh, back there. Okay. And then I guess our chest will just place right like this. Okay. So that'll give us access to the storage of the stuff that's straining out. So the only thing we have to do is just put the strainer in here. I'm not sure how we can automatically put strainers in. Maybe there's a way that you just, you know, push items in and the strainer knows how to go in there. Maybe something we'll look at for further automation in the future. So we want to make more dirt. So let's look at the uses for this one. This one gives us ores. Okay. What about the other one then? This one uses. This one gives us dirt, all these gems, sticks, gold. Okay. So this is the one we want, the solid, uh, dense one. All right. So if we put that in here... Can I click that with our efficiency meter and see if it says 20%? I assume that's how this thing works, but I don't know. Yeah, bonus efficiency 20%. So we should be collecting stuff. Maybe. Uh, unless there is some other... No, no, I just got a durability use on there. Okay, so we got ourselves a mud ball. Maybe it takes a minute for this thing to start working. Yeah, it seems like we just got another item there pretty quickly. Mm, I don't know if there's ways to speed this up beyond the efficiency, but we have higher efficiency than when we had previously, so I assume this should be better. But yeah, we can see that there are items that are coming in here every now and then. And this is in the base too, so it'll make it much nicer for us to... Uh, come get the stuff and we have large storage for it, which we didn't have before either, which is really really good So yeah, I think overall this is gonna work well for us All right guys, are you about ready to be blown away? Boom, I know I know <laughs> in fact I added in a second one. It's it's amazing It's probably the most amazing thing you guys have seen all day, right? <laughs> 
Yeah, so I added, added in a second one, mirroring exactly what we did over here, except this one's got the other strainer in it. You can see the strainer looks slightly different there. Yep. Uh, so we are collecting our different ores and stuff off that. Now that I know how this thing works, it's just simple. You just, you know, replace... Um, you just got to replace the strainer, and you're good to go. Like, that's it. It's just start collecting, put it into the chest for me. That's all I got to do. Very, very easy. I'm sure there is a way that we can hook these things up so it'll replace the strainers for us automatically as well, but we'll look at that at some other point. For right now, it is collecting all the resources that we could ask of it, and that is really good in my opinion. So let's take some of the dirt that we have. We'll just turn that into, you know, regular dirt. And we'll let it collect some more. I do want to check out these saplings and check out these trees. It is raining outside, so let us, first of all, make sure that we go to sleep. <laughs> uh, yeah, we don't want to get acid rain on us or whatever that is. Now, even after you sleep, you see how the rain's still kind of flowing down a little bit there? If you sleep and immediately go outside after it's raining, you'll still get poisoned. you got to wait a few seconds for that the rain particles to completely go away. You know, another thing I've been meaning to mention to you guys... Uh, these unlit torches, we saw that before, like, if you pick one up, uh, it turns into an unlit torch, right? If you break a torch, let me set this down, we'll light it. If I break it and pick it up, it turns into an unlit torch. Um, you can take the unlit torch and right-click it onto another torch and it'll light it, so now it's called a lit torch, right? Well, here's the deal. If you place this lit torch down, you can shift right-click it and pick it up. And it turns into a regular Minecraft torch. Mm-hmm. I've seen the ones, the lit torches, they will eventually go out in your inventory. I'm not sure if it's like if you go into water or if it rains or what happens, but it does go out. The uh, Minecraft versions of these torches do not. So, yeah, you can just place them down. Like I said, script these. If you have the unlit, place them down, light them like so, and just shift right click on them. And then they turn into the regular Minecraft ones, and you don't have to worry about that. That's pretty awesome. Anyway, uh, so <laughs> let's grab bone meal. Do we have any bone meal? Have I used it all? Oh, boy. I think I might have used it all. We might have to use our watering can here. But if that's the case, then I'm going to want to grab uh, some leaves and start turning that into water so we can fill up our watering can. Uh, yeah, I, I might need to go around. Well, I guess we could also grab some of the appetite that we should now be collecting and turn it into the fertilizer. That might be worth doing. Uh, how much appetite do we have? We have, like, three fertilizer here and 20 appetite. Well, we should be collecting more, so I guess we can use this stuff. It probably makes sense to do this, actually. So that and that, plus this. All right, so we got 19 fertilizer. Uh, do we have any more sand? We have it in sandstone form. Is there a way to convert that back? I think there might be a way, maybe with a compacting drawer or something. But for right now, I think this will serve our purpose. Uh, so let's um, fill up our watering can, go outside, somewhere where we got enough room to grow these trees. I think I wanted to grow the coconut first because that's the one that you put iron with to get your ore berry bush. So let's check this one out. Um, I'm not sure where we're going to plant these things. I kind of want them in like a permanent location but at the same time, I don't know. We were growing our other trees over here, um, the spruce ones. Yeah, I guess we can just plant a coconut tree over here and call it good. We'll see how this all goes. Uh, which one's a coconut? This one. All right, so let's plant that here. We will bone meal it, fertilize it. So one fertilizer. Wow, that's kind of a crazy looking tree. Uh, so we're supposed to get coconuts off this. I don't know how these trees work. I don't know... If you chop it down, if the leaves have a chance of dropping coconuts, or if you just have to wait and then, like, coconut things appear. I am not seeing anything on this tree that looks like a coconut itself. A coconut fruit, I guess. Uh, let's try chopping it down. So it does not chop down like a normal tree. Hmm. Okay, well, I wasn't expecting this. <laughs> Yeah, I've never used these particular trees before, so I, I really didn't know what to expect, to be honest. Uh, let me climb up a little bit, I guess. We'll pillar up. And do that. Go up some more. Yeah, we'll try chopping this tree down and just see if we end up with coconuts, I guess, from the despawning leaves. I really would like to see more saplings. Okay, well, we got a sapling, so we're good on that. 
Cool. So I guess we'll just come down here, wait for the rest of the tree to despawn, and hopefully we will get some coconuts. Yeah, I, I honestly don't know how these work. All right, guys, so it looks like these different trees, you can bone meal the leaves, like by default, the leaves are just a normal leaf block. Uh, you can bone meal them or just let them continue to mature themselves and they turn into some kind of a flower, on most of these trees anyway. And then after a while, that flower will turn into like, over here, a cherry. You can just right click on them and pick them. So I have planted all of our different trees here. And yeah, we've gotten a whole lot of different types of these uh, crops here. But yeah, like uh, this flower, for instance, I can right click on it with the bone meal a few times and there we go. Now we have a peach. So let me right click that and then I can bone meal the leaf again and then we get a flower, right? All right, so you can keep doing that. I don't want to waste all of, well, I guess the fertilizer, not bone meal. Same thing though. Uh, I don't really want to waste all of these things will mature on their own and then we'll have plenty of stuff available for us to harvest. Now the coconuts, I wasn't really sure how that was working previously. I thought you just chopped down a tree and you randomly get one. Turns out it works kind of the same way. Uh, you can see up there, there appears to be two coconuts on the same leaf block. Originally, there was just one. I guess another one grew next to it. Um, they look rather green, and I'm not sure if you got to wait until those things like turn brown to harvest. I've never seen a green coconut in a store, is all I'm saying. I'm not a coconutologist. Anyway, I assume these need time to mature. Uh, they go from like a regular leaf block to a green coconut, then I assume there's like some other stage that we will see here pretty soon. But anyway, so that's how these trees work. I've never played around with these before. It's kind of cool how it, how these things operate. Uh, but yeah, we are now starting to get some of the different material that we need here. Uh, so I can also take a look at the ore. Let's do ore berry. We can take a look at these once again and try and trade one of these. How about peach? Which one is that? Is that copper? So orange with two copper, we should have orange. And I think we have copper down below. Um, I do want to go and try and collect one of these ore berries together, and then I'll end up having to wait because we can't do them all right now. We have to get the, the minerals smelted down, and then we also have to wait for the coconuts before we can even get the iron one, right? Uh, so let's try and get two copper. Do I have copper? I do. We have two. Perfect. Okay. Two copper and an orange should give us an ore berry bush for... Copper. Let's try it. So orange, two copper, and there it is. Very easy. So I have not used the ore berries mod before. I have used these plants when it was in Tinker's Construct. Um, so I assume they work just the same. You place them down, they have like multiple growth stages. And as far as I remember, they have to be in complete darkness. So you can achieve that simply by putting like slabs around them on the four sides and on top like this. So that should make that completely dark inside. And then they, you just have to wait for them to grow. I don't know. Can you bone meal them? That doesn't appear to do anything. Uh, we could try water canning. Uh, I did use the water can on a lemon sapling <laughs> upstairs. I was trying to get that to grow. I ran out of bone meal or I guess the fertilizer, right? Uh, and it did not appear to make it grow. Now, it might have just been unlucky or this watering can just sucks. I'm not sure. But we can try using it on this here and see if we get a different result. See if we can get this thing to grow. Um, so, yeah, not a lot of stuff happening here. And we're going through most of the water in the watering can. And nothing. Yeah. These only have, like, three growth stages. So there might be, like, two stages where it's actually growing but just doesn't show. You know how like wheat has seven stages or eight stages, whatever it is. Maybe this has multiple stages at like the smallest size before it grows up to the biggest size I, or the medium size. I honestly don't know. Uh, but yeah, we're using over. Oh, there it goes. We just grew one spot. Uh, we're using. Oh, okay. Now we're at the biggest one and no fruit. <laughs> Can you bone meal it? To make it? No. Okay. So you just have to wait for this thing to mature further. It should get little spots on it. Then you can right click and harvest the berry. But yeah, I mean, as long as these things still need darkness, this is like the best way to do it. And then if you have multiple ore berries, you can just kind of like expand this out a little bit. Like so, put one over there and then put the roof on it and then have more berry plants like that. So we'll probably end up finding a spot maybe down here, kind of out of the way. I might end up <laughs> making this a little bit bigger for all of these plants. But anyway, yeah, that's how these things work. Um, again, I don't know if these are the same. In the Tinker's Construct version, they would do damage to you if you touched them. 
And these still do. So it might be the same exact code, just in a separate mod now. I don't know. But anyway, uh, I'm going to wait for those coconuts to mature, try and harvest some of them, see if we can get some more of the fruits from the other plants, try and smelt down some of our material here, get some more ingots, and try and get some more of the ore berries. How are we doing on this stuff now? I took a whole lot of the uh, the sand out of here, and I turned it into sand blocks so we can make some more of that. We have 30 more dirt balls after making a bunch more dirt. And this is, at this point, just collecting some fish and stuff. Anyway, let me uh, collect some more stuff from those trees, and we'll be back, guys. All right, guys, so I've been waiting around for a while trying to get the coconuts. I We've seen them before, how there was, like, two on that one leaf, and then, like, a couple of the other ones look like they were just singles. Uh, I just pillared up there with some cobblestone and tried -click, right-clicking the ones that had two of them. The first one that we saw the two of them. And yeah, I could right-click these off. Now, I went over to some other 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 coconuts there. I could not right-click them. I could not use a fertilizer on them. Uh, I guess it's just a certain amount of time. and There's not really any way that I could see if they are ready or not other than just going up there and right-clicking on them individually. So we ended up with two coconuts. Uh, another thing I've noticed is if you mine cobblestone with this pickaxe here, you still get these stones. I guess unless you are at a cobblestone generator, like if it's next to lava, and then you get the actual cobblestone block. Because that just ends up going right into my inventory as cobblestone. Anyway, uh, something I've noticed. So I was going to use cobblestone to pillar up. So I could get the cobblestone back and not have to worry about converting it to these other things. But apparently, that's not the case. You still turn them into these rocks by mining it away from a cobblestone generator. Just something to keep note of. Anyway, so we need the coconut plus two iron. I've also taken time here to smelt down the rest of our ores that we have collected. All of the ones that we've been collecting in here. As we had enough uh, in um, multiples of nine... I took them and I was melting them down our smeltery thing over here. So you can see we've collected a little bit since I last uh, got rid of our extras. So yeah, all of the stuff that we were storing in here as the different, I guess, nuggets or the ores or whatever, they are now as uh, ingots, which is nice. Okay, so let's take, or I, I meant storing as nuggets, but I guess they're called ores or whatever. Uh, let's take one coconut and two iron ore, and there is our iron ore berry bush, and that completes this quest. Aw, yeah. So if we go downstairs, you see I opened this up just a little bit, and I have planted these ore berry bushes down here. I have not tried water canning them to get them to go faster, but this one looks like it's ready to be harvested. So I right-click, and I get three silver ore berries. Nice. Uh, I bet the watering can would work pretty good on these things, but I'm just going to let them grow naturally. Uh, the one that I really cared about was the iron ore berry bush because you can use the iron ore berries. Ore berry. Uh, let's see, which one? Yeah, the iron ore berries in place of iron nuggets, which is going to be quite useful for making vanilla chests and other such things. So like this, for instance, instead of taking one of our ingots and melting it down, casting out nine nuggets or whatever, we can just come down here, right click and have like, you know, a few of the ore berries. And those work in place of the nuggets, which is going to be quite nice. But yeah, these are going to be growing at their own leisurely pace until we get some way of speeding up the crop growth. As we saw before, like bone mealing them doesn't really work. And it was still pretty slow for us to use a watering can. But I don't know, maybe maybe the watering can works best when they're fully grown to get them to mature so they have the berries. Anyway, uh, so this quest is now complete. It does not give us any reward, and we are pretty much done. Yeah, we, no, we are 100% done with the first page of the quest book. This one is if you update the pack and you need to redo the quests or whatever, uh, you click that button. Okay, so now that that's done, we can start into the next section here called Magical Life. Now, we're probably not going to get too far into this today, but you can see here that looks like bees might be... A thing. I don't know if those are required in this mod pack or not, but let's take a look at this first one. It says fairy tales. I should look if I find if I find the home of all the fairies that inhabit this planet. That seems like a really weird sentence. I should look if I find the home of all the fairies that inhabit this planet. Okay. <laughs> not sure if the structure I found is the home of the fairies, but something used to live here. And reading the books gave me quite an insight of some magic knowledge. 
Not that I used to believe in magic, but surely worth a try. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, uh, I assume this unlocked because of the rune stone that I found, the pyre, and all this other stuff. Yeah, you can see a lot of these things we've already completed. Uh, just by walking into that other camp, there was a lot of this stuff already uprooted, and I collected my inventory. That's why we had some of that stuff over here, these different things from Roots 2. Um, anyway, back to the quest book. So it wants us to have the pyre, which we can harvest. The chisel, root stone, the rune stone. What else are we missing here? Oh, all of the three different books. Okay, well, let's go over there real quick. Right click on this and rune circle. Great. Okay, so like I said, a lot of these things are uprooted. I just kind of like picked them up as I was walking through here. So we have pyres, no tool. Okay, there's a pyre. Uh, we saw that there was books here. There's a book, there's a book, and there's a book. Is that all the books? Are we gonna complete the quest? What else are we needing here? Oh, we need the runestone and chiseled runestone. Do we have everything else? Yes, we have everything else complete here. So runestone and chiseled. That should complete the quest. Quest complete, fairy tales. I don't know if we need this runestone or not. I honestly don't. So let's go back here. Uh, wait, now it says this is not complete. Incomplete? Why does that say incomplete? We just completed it. Okay. Well, anyway, it unlocked these other quests here. <laughs> um, infusing life. In one of those books, I read of a way to bringing dead animals back to life. That sounds not really realistic, but if this life infusing really works, I am in much better shape. I will start in and try that on dead fish. Uh, that is a lot of stuff here. Tiny item input, tiny item output, machine controller. Wow, modular machinery this early on. I was thinking this was going to be magic, but modular machinery? That's not necessarily magic. What does that machine controller cost? So that requires a machine casing, which is just copper. Interesting. I played with modular machinery before in a lot, well, in a couple other mod packs, and generally it's quite expensive. But I guess, I guess we're doing this as like an earlier game kind of a thing in this pack. Okay, so just copper ingots. Mm -hmm. uh, let's warp back to our base. Home portal. I don't even know if we have enough copper for this. Uh, let's take a look. What do we got for copper? We have 13. Well, that should get us enough for the controller anyway. So there's our copper, or I guess that's the casing, isn't it? So machine casing plus a lever gives us the controller. Well, I had an extra lever over here, okay? So machine casing plus a lever. There's a machine controller. Uh, tiny item output. Tiny item output. Requires us to have another machine casing. Okay, so we're gonna need loads of copper to complete this. So that is one thing. And then the other one wanted us to have three tiny item inputs. So yeah, we don't have nearly the amount of copper that's gonna be required to get all this stuff done. Uh, we are collecting copper, but nowhere near the amount that we need. I mean, this is only gonna turn into what? Like four ingots of copper? That's not a whole lot. Uh. Okay, well, we're gonna have to hold off on this. I was kind of thinking we might be able to get through it, that there would be some cheaper recipe, but I guess we're gonna have to wait until we get more ores coming in, or maybe setting up an ore berry farm for each specific met mineral would be a good idea. Uh, I don't know, either way, it's a lot of farming that we're gonna have to do. Okay, so this quest, no go just yet. Um, how about this one? Exploring further, I found another structure, seemingly of more advanced species. I should look if I can get some of their knowledge as well to exploit my advantage. Okay, so we can assume that there's going to be a Batania structure around that we're going to have to go find. Another abandoned structure. So we found the Roots one. Um, apparently there's going to be one for Batania. And what is this one? In one of those books I read of a smaller fairy subspecies looking similar to bees, they are very shy and need to be lured. Apparently, they like seed oil, fairy dust, and flowers. 
The book said that those bees are able to gather resources, so this seems to be very useful for the future. Aha. Uh -huh. So, again, more copper is going to be required for this. And 23 bee houses? Oh, my goodness. What does a bee house cost? What do you cost? I cannot make one of these. There is no recipe. Okay. So, either we're going to have to do some kind of special in-world crafting with another mod, or there's going to be a whole lot of bee houses in this other structure that we're supposedly supposed to be finding. Okay. Well, we can't really progress any further <laughs> in this quest line. Um, we need to go find the Batania area. Maybe that'll help us out and get us going here. Resource automation. I guess we could look at making a sieve. A sieve? I was going to say a sift. A sieve uh, and a fiber mesh. Okay, so this says, I wonder if sieving the ash of this planet would give me access to some new resources. For now, a basic fiber mesh would be enough to test. Rain would mess up the sieving, but the structure doesn't need to be something fancy. Something made out of wood would be sufficient. Okay, so a sieve. Uh, here it is. So that's not bad. So a uh, one wood slab, some planks, and some sticks. Okay, I think we can do that. So we already have uh, a slab. We have some planks, and we have some sticks. Is that the right quantity? I think that is right. Okay, so a sieve. There it is. All right, uh, and the other thing wanted us a fiber mesh. So a fiber mesh is made with plant fiber. Okay, easy enough. There is our plant fiber. And there is our fiber mesh. So that should complete the first portion of this quest. Oh, and then we already have 64 ash block. So now it wants us to have ash powder, phosphor... Tiny pile of coal dust, tiny pile of burnium dust, sulfur, niter, and dust pile. Okay. Uh, doesn't seem too overly complicated, so let's grab a stack of that. We will put down this. Missing 64 exposed wood shakes block. Oh, boy. Uh... Room, block must be in closed room of at least 100 blocks in interior size and at least 64 exposed wood shakes. What is a wood, widow, <laughs> wood shake? What is a wood shake? Earthworks. So one log plus one flint gives us six oak wood shakes. Aha. Uh -huh. How many did we need? Uh, wait, where is it? This one. 64. All right. Well, we're going to need like six or uh, 12 or so flint, right? That's not bad. But we are going to have to dig out and do this. I don't know if we're going to have time today to do this. This and that. I did not mean to craft that many. <laughs> uh, so apparently... It doesn't consume the flint. <laughs> I was expecting it to consume the flint. I mean, you see, oak wood plus flint gives you six of these back. Uh, well, we have a lot of spruce wood shakes. If you guys want some, you can borrow some from me. Oh, my goodness. Okay, well, I guess what we're going to do. Uh, we're kind of hitting roadblock after roadblock here. I need to build yet another room. It's probably something fairly similar to this. We might just build another path over here. But it needs to have the spruce wood shakes exposed. Maybe we'll do the entire room out of this stuff. The walls and the ceiling. I don't know. We have a lot of it. Um, can I do anything else with this stuff? I wonder uses. We can turn it into fences and other decorative stuff. We can smelt it. <laughs> uh, yeah, so tell you what. We're going to go ahead and wrap the episode up here for today. I'm going to dig out a room where we'll... Line it with enough stuff so our sieve will be happy. Mm -hmm. And then we'll look at sieving next time. All right, guys. That's going to do it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like on the episode if you liked it. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.